Today I'm not just going to tell you how to write programs, but how to write good programs and how to be a good programmer. And I'm going to help you build good programming skills right away. And you can work in any area, and in that area you could and in that area you could be either bad, average, or perfect. Our area is programming, right? So what makes you perfect in programming? Sure thing, it is the programs you write. So today, we're going to learn how to make your programs perfect. So it doesn't matter if you're either just starting to learn to program, or if you're a, or if you're a, um, a little, or if you have a little experience in programming. It doesn't even matter if you, it doesn't even matter about the lang about the language you use in programming like scratch or more complex languages like python javascript also today i'm going to explain to you what function means in programming and also how to create and why to create your own blocks in scratch the programming world has a lot of rules, and the rules are made by by other by by other programmers in their years of experience. This is called be best programming practices. The earlier you use, you start using these rules and have the habits for using them, the better programmer you're gonna be. And and later on in the future no one no one you're not going to have to you're not going to have to fight your bad habits in programming and no and no one's going to say that your code's bad or in other words programmers say code smells good habits in programming are the same as good table manners Believe me, every program, even the smallest one you're planning to do, can grow really big. And the bigger the program, the harder it is to maintain it or, or make changes to it. And if you think you're not going to change anything if you're in your program later, then you're probably wrong. So for example, the well-known game Fortnite. It was released way back in 2011, but it was actually released in 2017. That's about six years of working. And by now it's the end of 2018 and, they, and they've and they been updating all the time. So they made a lot of changes in the program and the huge team worked for six years. Sure, you can tell me you're not going to build Fortnite, but every huge project starts from just one little experiment and every huge and every huge program starts off with just one line of code. So if you want to be a good programmer, and I believe you do, so let's go. First, when you're coding, keep in mind that somebody might read it later. Even if you're not going to share your project now, make it be like make it be so everybody who's looking at the project can understand it and what you're supposed to do. And what I mean is keep your programming area clean because that can not just help other people understand it and read it, but it could help you when you come back to your program a couple weeks later. Next rule, when you create your variables, give them meaningful names. For example, here, in my game, I have a couple of variables. And they have meaningful names like apple speed, apples car, and remaining time. And never name your variables like A, B, X, Y, Z. Because even for you, when you get back to your project, that's going to be very hard to understand what they mean. Another very important thing is comments. It doesn't mean you have to comment on every single thing in every single code. But when you build a block of code or a function, always uh always you always make comments to tell what what the block does to the program. For 
By the way, if you're wondering what function means in programming, keep watching this video. I'll tell you later. Here's how you can add your comments in Scratch. All you have to do is right click on your mouse and then and then it's and then click add a comment. And here you can write any text that's gonna be that's gonna be useful and anything that maybe describes your program. You can add as much comments as you need to. Another key rule DRY. Don't repeat yourself. And with this rule, we got very close to function in your own blocks and scratch. So, a function is a named section of your program that performs a specific task. Here's an example of a very easy function. This function just adds two numbers. In Scratch, there already is this function. Here's an example of another function, a function of painting. Every programming language has built-in functions, or you can create your own. And every set and subset of functions create libraries. In Scratch, you can create your own function by building your own block. So what does DRY, or don't repeat yourself, stand for? It means what it says. Let's start with creating your own custom block in Scratch. You can, you can give it any name. If you click options, you can add your own arguments. For example, I selected two numbers. The block that we're using right now is just an example. This, this, this is a block of adding. Here we're calling this block and passing two numbers. And here let's build our own function and what it does. So here's how our functions work in Scratch, or, or also called your own custom blocks. So here we call it, and here, we, and here it does all we wanted it to do. So now, when do we need to make our own functions or blocks? And how functions help you follow the principles of DRY, don't repeat yourself. First, whenever you see, um, part of code that is re that is repeated in more in one or more sprites in more than one sprite then then is the time to use your own blocks so right now i'm going to show you an example in this program how of how effective your own blocks are and how to use them Probably the most common time when you repeat your programs is your sprite movements. So probably almost all the time when you write um when you write uh movement codes for your for your sprite, it's gonna look something like mine. My code for the bowl. All it does is just moves the bowl right and left. Now let's make our own block for controlling sprites. Let's call it move to and give it two arguments. And the direction is speed.
So here, when I'm calling this function, I'm saying what direction I want to move in at what speed. I could have been telling it how to how to move with minus and plus, but this is not that right. Instead of this, we just have to think about the speed, not thinking about the coordinates. But to move to the left, I'll show you a little trick. So now our program works as it worked before, but now with the help of functions. Now it's hard to see what it's hard to see why what what the good thing about functions is since there's not less codes or something. But don't worry, now I'll show you what the thing that's good is in functions. And in Scratch, there's this you there's this very useful item called the backpack. So this is used to um to take any parts of a a, a project that you like you just you just put it in your backpack and later on if you need them you you just pull them out and use them. So now let's improve our function and make it more useful. So with functions now let's make our sprite be able to move up and down. Now our function can let our sprite move in all of the directions. And you can use this for different sprites. For example, for our bow, we don't have to make it go up and down, we just, but our function still does it. But we're still using our function. Let's say later on, we have to make a new sprite. And we want to move the sprite all, all directions, but but our but our other sprite already took over the arrow keys. So we want to use other keys. With the with the use of our function, this is this is made very easy. Our ball is moving with with the arrow keys and our monkey is moving with WASD. Oops, my monkey's not moving up and down. Why? Sure, because I took I took the the old block from our backpack. So all I did is just took my block and passed on different arguments and new keyboard keys. So now I can use this block for any sprite I need to move. And I won't have to write the exact same looking commands. And this will save us a lot of time. And it's easier to debug it and find errors because it's all in one place. And this is what helps us use Use the rule DRY. Don't repeat yourself. So I hope you use this advice in your own programming. And maybe later you could even make your own contribution to best programming practices. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that like button if you like the video. And see you later.